So a few months ago now, I played and reviewed Fallout 76, a game that had quite mixed reviews upon launch, but it's safe to say that over time it's received many updates, allowing for a lot of improvement to the point where it's actually worth playing now, if you do enjoy this RPG genre of games. A similar game that released a year after Fallout 76, this being The Outer Worlds, which follows the same sort of theme and world, so I thought I'd check it out and see how it does compare to Fallout, with them both being so similar. However, it also has lots of differences in other aspects, making the game its own rather than just a knockoff. So the plot of the game is focused around the main protagonist, a space colonist that's been frozen in hibernation for many years along with lots of others. However, you're the lucky one who was released by a scientist after the colony ship had malfunctioned. Now this ship basically transports humans over to this deep space world, moving into their new home. And to summarise it, you are there to investigate the conspiracy of what happened, but ultimately stop who or whatever is stopping the colony. And I actually quite like the plot of the game. Overall, there's quite a lot of twists to the story and it has its deep meaning though one of the biggest aspects that makes this game's narrative is the fact that you play a huge role in how it plays out there's lots of multiple choice dialogue and the deeper you go into interacting with characters and npcs the more you can not only learn but also the more you can change the story's route the game puts a lot of major and important choices onto you for you to basically decide and this is what holds the story together i would say the amount of interaction you can have with the world's characters but you being able to lie and manipulate and persuade through dialogue options and your built-up skills. Even early on, you're given big choices to make, with each one affecting a group of people, making you really think but also have fun with it because you don't really know what to expect, with characters' reactions being different to what you decide on, definitely adding to the replayability and the immersion, because there is an awful lot of dialogue in this game, but this well-put-together system makes it less repetitive, as I know it may seem a bit boring for some people on the surface, which actually brings me on to the character customization. Again, quite similar to out but I'm going to try and not constantly mention it as the game has massive similarities with everything but following on you can fully make your build and character the way you want this is from the body with the adjustable strength and dexterity and then the mind as well with intelligence and perception and then the personality with charm and temperament now you can set the stages for any of them hiring or lowering the attributes which helps create a unique character however you only start with six points in this area meaning you'll have to sort of balance these out and choose what you see fits for example the body Body will affect melee damage and how much you can hold in weight, but not just gameplay, the personality section will actually alter the dialogue options and the story. This is before we even start the game as well. As you progress, you unlock skill points which go into the skill section, just like many games. It doesn't follow a typical skill tree system, but you'll be given a handful of points to add on to more specific areas than before, like stealth, tech, defense, etc. Just adding on to how flexible you can really be with the system, making the gameplay unique each time, allowing you to test out different builds and just that freedom of what you want to alter. It means you can go all out in one area or try and spread them out for what's important. It doesn't even stop there. Still, before you enter gameplay, you can add a small bonus by, by choosing an aptitude, just an extra boost of something. This could be a boost in persuasion or medical, for example. Now, the actual gunplay is really good, with a ton of selection that you can loot and unlock along the way, this being the standard set of ARs, handguns and shotguns, etc. Pretty much every category. But there's also unique weapons, like so many scrap parts and other materials to make loads of melees but then there's also random ones as well like a literal spade and the fun ones are in the science weapons as well which are basically sci-fi and special weapons like gloop guns and ray guns with wacky features like shrinking enemies so the arsenal itself i really liked and it felt more unique than fallout to me or at least i just had more fun with them of course this variation mixed with the customization of your build goes so well in hand making you determine your gameplay even more the feel of them i would say are really smooth to handle and fire. Not anything crazy, I mean they do have some immersive animations to them, so it's not so basic with each one. And another feature that links into a lot of what I've said, and adds a lot to the gameplay, is the companion system. Meaning you can recruit characters to your small team that will accompany you along the way. Now this is of course an AI system which is seen in many games, some better than others, like Ghost Recon and Resident Evil. But a prominent one that's also similar in terms of recruitment is Assassin's Creed. And in the Outer Worlds you can recruit six, and they aren't just random random people because there's actually only six characters you can find as you progress, which I think makes it a lot better than the other games with this feature, as they aren't just random NPCs and AIs, because they actually feel like their own character rather than just an AI helper, mainly because they all have their own story branch and you can talk to them, with each one having their own personality and various dialogue options once again, which is so great. And when I say personality, I don't just mean from talking and the way their character talks, but also because they can make their own decisions, like deciding to leave the team because of the way 
you play, whether that be if you're too ruthless for example, which I think was great to include and makes you think on the way you play, just like in the customization system. And they also have their own character development over time, just like other characters in the main story. As I said, with all this, it makes for something way more immersive than just an AI character because there's actual thought that's gone into it, with them being their own actual character. And not even just that, but they also work well as a teammate and help a lot, at least for me anyway, with you being able to command them to targets and perform different moves, each one having different gameplay styles and actions, adding on to the experimentation, with you being able to switch out different recruits and use their abilities combined to your advantage. Now one of my favourite aspects of The Outer Worlds that made me prefer it to Fallout even early on would be the overall world and exploration. The art style mixed with the variation in the world is incredible. I'm aware that Fallout 76 had many different biomes but I think the colours mixed with this being a galaxy rather than just one map, I think it has that big advantage for me. It just appears more stunning. With high attention to detail from the nature to the towns you come across, even the minor locations having such a wide variety of animals, but also small quests to them and characters you can interact with with random in-world events. Again, not just being some filler NPCs, but having a bunch of dialogue to them. It doesn't feel empty, and as I mentioned, with it being in space rather than a wasteland, I know it might not be a fair comparison in terms of the theme, but the vibrancy of the biomes and variation in the planet looks gorgeous, and way more fun to explore in for me personally. There's just so much detail in each area and doesn't seem like they didn't bother with certain parts or left areas uncovered, though one thing they do have in common is the fact that the world is basically falling apart in this game and in Fallout, which both do a great job at portraying that and are so interesting to explore, with dark but also more vibrant areas. And then this mixed with the story and gameplay as I covered, I would say it makes it worth playing in 2024, almost five years later, which is crazy to be honest. And I think that's where I end my review of The Outer Worlds in 2024. I had a lot of fun playing this game, honestly a lot more than I thought I would. Coming off from Fallout, I know 76 wasn't the best game to follow on from, but I'm glad I've still gave a similar game a chance and actually enjoyed it a lot more. Looking at the playthrough as a whole, it was a great experience I think, and if you are considering it, you'll enjoy it too. So if you did enjoy this video or found it helpful, then let me know by tapping that like button down below. And if you like single players, then that's what this channel is all about. I do videos on various games with a playlist of a series I've done in the description down below. Also, if you'd like to support me by becoming a member of the channel and gain access to various perks, then tap the join button or there'll also be a link below. Thank you for the support and watching until the very end. That was The Outer Worlds and bye-bye.